Hi, I'm Stuart from Tour Guide. I'm here with Andrew and Zephyr from Milwaukee. And I got a lot of questions about the new Forge batteries and all the technology around it. Um, let's go. Okay, so we got a chance to introduce you to the next breakthrough today uh, on the M18 system. And Stuart, you always have the best detailed questions for us. So uh, we got a lot of exciting stuff to walk you through today uh, and start to break it down of what's underneath the hood and what really makes it special. Okay, so we have a Forge HD12 and a Forge XC8. All right, can you tell me what's different between these batteries and uh, like the high output? Yeah, sure. So I think there's, there's a couple things that um, we're excited about this year in addition to the Forge batteries. Um, and what I mean by that is this year we're going to introduce uh, the next breakthrough on M18, uh, which is... A combination of new battery technology from Forge, uh, new power state brushless motors, uh, and new electronics that are going to make the system uh, over 50% more powerful uh, versus where it was in the past while still being fully compatible. Um, so, Zafir, by all means, take it away. Tell them a little bit about the Forge batteries. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you know, when we look at our users that are using. Uh, you know, our high output 80, 12 volt batteries today, typically they're being used on really high demand applications. They're being used in some very powerful tools. And we understand that in those situations, they're gonna need more power, more runtime. They're operating in, in hot environments or overheating packs or doing back-to-back -back applications. So when we were looking at our, our next generation batteries, Love Lithium Forge, for the 80 and 12 volt, we wanted to be able to deliver batteries that had more power, uh, more capability, and the ability to operate in that kind of back-to-back -back environment. So. Uh, with the Forge, uh, Red Lithium Forge HD120, this is now our most powerful M18 battery that we've ever had. It's 50% more power than the high output HD120 battery. Uh, it has a 35 minute supercharge to 80%. So that's 25% faster than the high output HD120 battery we have today. And it has cool cycle capability, which we're gonna really dive into and talk about the benefit of that feature. Uh, and it also delivers on that longest life promise. So these batteries are more durable, they have resistant housings. They have advanced pack construction to withstand drop and vibration. Uh, they have a patented ingress coating, which is going to be a big, big topic this year. Um, and they deliver uh, increased cycle life as well. Now, the Forge XE80 battery delivers on many of those similar promises. So it's the same power as the high output HD120. So we're talking about a battery that's 20% smaller, 30% lighter, uh, and it delivers the same power as that battery, so that means faster application speeds and capability to do. It also has a 35 minute supercharge, 80%, and it has that cool cycle capability, in addition to the longest life promise. Okay, so the XC, the Forge XC, XC8 has the same power level as HD12. High up in HD12, okay. that's correct. So let's ignore that one for a second. Sure. So what does that mean? So what kind of a tool is optimized for the high output 12? Can you give me an example of that? Yeah, so if you look at some of our high-powered tools, like tables, uh, tabletop tools like uh, table saws, miter saws, high-demand applications like super hogs and um, uh, other products like that, they're not only pulling a lot of power, a lot of current, but they're also typically used in long duration, back-to-back -back type scenarios. So in those types of situations, uh, when you get more power, it gives you the faster application speed, so you get the job done faster, or it allows you to step up to do more demanding applications, higher density material, tougher applications, and that's where you now no longer have to make the compromise of you know, taking on a battery that's larger and heavier and scale down to a, a Forge XC80 battery that delivers the same application speed, the same capability to do on those demanding tools uh, without having to take on the additional burden of size and weight. Okay, so with a tool like the Whole Hog, you use the Forge XC8, you'll get the same power level as HD, the high output HD12, so you get the large holes drilled the same, same amount of time, no bogging down. Exactly. But less weight, lower, smaller size and less weight. Smaller size, less weight, and uh, four amp hours lesser runtime. So that's one thing we, we do want to clarify is this has the power of the high up at issue 12 though, but reduced runtime as well. So eight amp hours versus 12 amp hours. And we'll, we'll talk okay. a little bit more too about power versus runtime and okay, when, so, when you make that trade off. So similar power, smaller gas tank. Correct. But smaller size and lighter weight. Exactly. Okay. All right, and looking at, here we have the high output 12 and the Forge 12. So it's about the same size. 
Um, same weight? Yep. More power. Correct. So 50% more power. That is the most powerful M18 battery we've ever made. Um, and one of the pieces that Andrew spoke to as part of our, our next breakthrough in, in motors, electronics, when you pair the tool with the battery, it's really increasing, uh, it's opening up a new step changing capability in the total power output of the system. So what that means for this is it allows us to develop higher power tools, which you're gonna see coming through the future and what we're gonna introduce today. It also means that it gives you faster application speeds and the ability to do even tougher materials than the high output HG12O can handle. With existing tools. Existing tools, that's Okay, correct. so going back to the, the Super Hog. So user won't notice much of difference in size or weight, but with the Forge, they'll notice a difference in application speed. Yeah, so it's gonna depend from tool to tool. In some situations, you know, the, the tool may be the limiting factor, but yes, so when you go to higher power tools, those tools are gonna to take greater advantage of, of the Red Lithium Forge HD 12O. The other benefit of that is, is the cool cycle capability. So if you think about a SuperHog user, a miter saw user, someone that's doing long duration back-to-back -back applications, one of their challenges is, you know, eventually they're gonna to get to a point where that, that pack's gonna shut down because it's overheated because they're, they're doing nonstop applications back-to-back. That cool cycle technology is going to allow us to rapidly cool that battery on the charger, get them back on the tool, and that tool is going to be able to deliver more work and more uptime throughout the day, which means increased productivity. Okay, that makes sense. I see cool cycle. You have these little vents. Yes. And on the bottom, is that just, is that passive venting? What does this do? Yeah, so, yeah, let's talk a little bit. You can see through it. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about cool cycle. So you're probably noticing the, the cool cycle is, is laser etched. It's branded on top of the 80 and the 12 volt battery. Uh, it's also, you can see on the dual base supercharger, uh, it's branded on the charger as well. And so this cool cycle technology was first introduced on the MX Fuel supercharger last year. And we had it on the M18 dual base supercharger when we announced it last year as well. But it was kind of a feature that was, we hinted at there was gonna be future batteries coming. That time is now. So when you pair these batteries with this charger, you'll notice the venting <clears throat> lines up between the packs and the chargers. And that venting is not just in the, in the housing. So if you open this pack up, you're gonna notice that venting goes through the top housing, through the core. So we've created airflow now through the core, out the bottom of the core, out through the bottom of the housing, and you pretty much have full airflow from the top to the bottom. So what that means is we've got two fans built in this charger and one dedicated for each bay. It's pulling that, cold, that ambient air around it in through the bottom and it, through the battery and pushing that hot air. <clears throat> so if you have a battery that's overheated, uh, it's going to, as soon as you put on the charger, it's immediately going to start cooling. Okay. That temperature is going to come down and it's going to start charging faster. And it's going to come off the charger cooler. So in totality, um, start charging faster comes off the charger cooler, you're gonna be able to deliver more productivity on back-to-back -back applications, which means more uptime. It's up to, uh, we've seen up to 3X more work that you can do get done over an eight-hour workday when you compare a Forge 80 battery versus a high output 80 Hey, and can I add one thing? Can you hear me on that battery? Yeah. So <clears throat> one thing that's helpful in this with the Forge 80 and 12 is that we're using tabless cylindrical cells, which is a steel can. So what we're doing is we're rapidly forcing air through the entire battery pack and it's wicking away all the heat from the inside of the cell out to the can. So they work really, really well for, for this type of application. So the tabless cells, it's wrapped in a, like a cylindrical can so that acts kind of like a, like a heat sink. Yep. So it, it wicks it to the outer part of the cells and you force the air between the cells. So, so it's kind of like a, like a car in the summer. Like you, you, you open the car, the car is hot, you crank down the windows, um, it cools down a little bit, then you start driving, then you have the airflow, and then it cools it down faster. Exactly. So that's, so that's what the charger basically does. When you charge it, it builds heat in the battery pack, but because you have the cool cycle forcing air through, it cools down the cells. Cooler cells, you can charge faster. Right, exactly. And then the other benefit is that it effectively uh, allows the pack to live longer as well, because uh, heat is bad for batteries in terms of life expectancy. So not only does it improve the turnaround time, uh, but it also will extend the life of the battery packs as well. Do you have a number about 
approximately how much longevity you could expect under the like, average usage conditions? Yeah, sure. So um, I'll give you an answer of it depends, uh, which, which I know is, is your favorite. It, it, uh, it, it's a fair answer. And the, the reason I say it depends is um, it, it truly does in terms of the use case. So the use, the application, the environment, storage condition, like there's a pretty big stack up uh, of everything. Um, but what I can uh, tell you is that with the, the Forge uh, 80 and 120 batteries that we're launching, uh, they deliver up to 50% uh, longer cycle life versus our red lithium and high output batteries. And that's while still being able to charge faster on the supercharger. So we're able to charge the batteries faster and rapidly cool them at the same time and still deliver longer life versus the prior generation batteries. Sounds good. It's very good. <laughs> and it, and, and I, I, it makes sense to me because if you could do more with this battery, you might push it harder. So I can see why you're reluctant to say why it's an up to 50% longer under regular conditions, but you could push a lot harder. Correct. And, and hey, when we, we said that you can do you know three times the amount of work now based on you know the power output and the thermal capability of the battery, and then when paired with the charger, the charge speed and the, the cool cycle active cooling. So you can do more work with less packs now. So it's really a critical to actually have a battery that lasts longer as well. Okay. And I could see this difference in appearance. Like this, even just the, the, the texture, this is like a matte finish. You have a new new fuel gauge. Oh yeah. What can you tell me about the case? Like you said, it's it's more resistant. Yep. Yeah. So uh, so what we've done is we've upgraded the plastic housings on our forged batteries uh, to a new material, uh, nylon-based material, to be resistant against oils, greases, and solvents. So um, I'll throw out a couple examples for you. Um, you could be uh, an automotive tech um, that gets consistent exposure to carb or brake cleaner, or you could be a uh, MRO professional working in a manufacturing environment where you're exposed to cut different types of cutting fluids. and all of those fluids are historically really rough on plastics. Uh, they like to break them down over time. Whereas these upgraded plastics are actually fully protected against that. So that's why you're seeing that different appearance and finish. So we're making the batteries more durable uh, in those environments as well. Okay, and that way everyone gets the upgraded battery so you don't have to seek out the special SKU or go to special suppliers. That's exactly it, yeah. So what we've uh, decided to do is, yeah, with, with these Forge batteries, including the 6.0 that we launched last year, is uh, upgrade them across the line. I see there's a lot of little changes. Like even the battery release tabs, here it's fully indented. Here it's it's not. I mean, it guides your finger to indent. Yeah, a couple things, you know, you, you called out exactly with the latches. We, we created the indentation to make it easier for the user to interface. You know, sometimes this is going into enclosure. Sometimes this is... Or you have gloves, gloves on. You exactly. can't, you can't. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we wanted to make it easier to handle. You called out the fuel gauge has been completely redesigned. Now we did that last year with the 6.0, but rubber over mold button, more durable, easier to engage, more tactile. And the fuel gauge, we've gotten a lot of great feedback on how much brighter this is, especially under direct sunlight. So um, yeah, it's been a great feature addition to the Forge Packs. And that's a great example of you know our approach, our fundamental approach to um, going out, engaging in the field directly with the users, listening to their pain points, and that fuel gauge and button specifically were a result of that as an area of opportunity for improvement. And the other thing I'll say with the, the new Forge batteries is that we left no stone unturned. Um, so there's a couple other things that we haven't talked about in terms of what we've upgraded within these battery packs. So we've alluded to it, but the, these battery packs utilize tablet cell technology. Um, which has a lower internal resistance. So what it's able to do is put more power out to the system, meaning you can make a more powerful tool that uh, completes the job faster and can do more demanding work. Uh, in addition to that, it runs cooler. Uh, so you can do that work longer without experiencing shutdowns. Uh, and then based on the design, uh, it also allows us to charge faster. Now, when you have a more powerful cell, the next thing we had to do was actually completely redesign all of the power routing uh, within the battery and the electronics to be able to get that out to the system. 
So you didn't just take new cells and put it into the same package, maybe dress up the, the housing. Correct. It's completely different. Yeah, so this is actually our ninth generation M18 battery pack. It is a complete ground up redesign. <clears throat> and we take a very different approach in terms of our attention to detail and solving those uh, user pain points that we talked about. So we've upgraded the, the power routing uh, to make sure that we eliminate any of the electrical bottlenecks within the battery pack. And what that resulted in uh, is 40% less heat generation within the battery. Uh, the other thing is we uh, miniaturized the electronics and we did that so that we could uh, have uh, more airflow going through more volume of the cells. Okay. Uh, next thing we did is, so if you have a, if you have a powerful cell and you have a lower resistance power routing, the next important thing is how do you actually connect them to each other? So we've implemented a laser welding process. So it's a ma new manufacturing oh. process that has a more robust connection. And what that allows for is lower heat generation. So it's better thermals because it's a better connection. In addition, it's more durable as well. So it, whether it's a high vibration uh, application or continuous drops or whatever it may be, uh, it's secured more tightly uh, to the cells. What is typically used in, say, like the HD? Is that just like a spot welding process? Yeah, it's a resistance welding. Yep. Okay. And so I see with, with the battery, it's... Uh, so the laser welding, it forms a joint in a, in a circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's... There, there's many other things we could go on and on uh, forever in terms of what we've done with the battery, but um, you know some of the areas that you're looking at, we've actually uh, double stacked uh, the material because this can be a hot spot within a battery uh, based on the power routing. So uh, we've designed that to run really, really cool as well. Oh, okay. So one would be positive, one would be the negative, and so you added extra reinforcement for current flow and for lower thermals. Exactly. Yep. And then the other thing it allows us to do is actually kind of shrink the size of the battery. So oh, I see everything's kind of yeah. So this eight is a little angled. staggered now, yeah. which is different than how we've done it in the past. And we're able to get a, a shorter battery, and then we're able to get more optimized airflow uh, via cool cycle with this staggered design as well. So it's not just two rows or two rows staggered. We have this completely different pattern. Yeah, yeah. you were kidding. This is from the ground up. You just how do you make a battery pack today versus building upon existing uh, techniques? Yeah, and this is, so this is a good example of taking two decades of lithium ion experience and all the lessons learned over that time and implementing them into the design. Uh, once again, the whole purpose to, to make our users more productive and, and solve their pain points. Yeah, and one of the, the final uh, d design improvements we made is, you know, we've talked about this patented ingress coating. Right. Um, protecting against water, dirt, dust, debris. You know, Andrew mentioned that, um, you know, the airflow technology, you know, there's, there's other competitors that are doing this airflow technology, but we believe the way we've designed the entire core, uh, miniaturized electronics, added venting in the top, uh, quite aggressively through the top and bottom of the pack, we're doing that more aggressively than, than anyone else. And, uh, the reason we're confident in being able to do that is that patented ingress coating technology. So the pack you're holding right now has that coating. You can't see, you know, like the conformal over, coating. Over everything here? Mm -hmm. The core. The entire thing. The entire, entire core. Yep, the entire all, core. All the cells, all the electronics, every... So all you're, of you're, you're telling me this is, this is waterproof. Well, this is... Resistant. It's resistant. Re yeah. It's resi resistant to incidental moisture. Yeah. Yes. You think about our users, right, and where they're operating. If, you know, our users are not working in climate controlled, roof over their head all the time. You know, they're working outdoors. You know, sometimes those packs get exposed to rain. They're getting exposed to the, the wood, the wood debris, the metal shavings, the, the concrete that they're working near. Um, and that's why this code, we, we introduced this coding. It's a superior technology uh, and the protection it provides allowed us to introduce the air cooling technology while maintaining our durability and being able to deliver that longest life promise. So um, it, it's what allowed us to be able to leverage cool cycle so effectively. Okay, I mean, I, I can't see any, so it's like an invisible thin film protecting it yeah. as opposed to uh, traditional potting where everything has to be, 
uh, walled off and filled in. Exactly. Um, and you're going to see a, a great demonstration of, of this patented ingress coating at Pipeline. It's, um, it's pretty impressive. Right. I see also I, the laser wells you're talking about. I see yep. here connecting more of the tabs. So this is just connecting all the batteries uh, to the array. Exactly. So we're applying that laser welding technology in the cell welds, strap welds, step welds. All those are, are key areas where we're leveraging that technology. How many processes does that take? Because you have laser welds on both sides. You have on the, the contact strips on the top. You have on... It's a process, Stuart. It's a process <laughs> for, for sure. Versus just spot welding on two planes. Yeah, it, it's not easy. That's for sure. It's it's a it's a new uh, it's a new manufacturing technique it, uh, um, that we're we're developing mastery in. We believe it, it it's a very superior approach to lowering the resistance, better thermal management, better durability, and it takes a significant investment from a manufacturing perspective to to deliver on, on technologies like that and. But we believe it's the right thing to do for the user to deliver a battery that's going to be, you know, a step above the competition, a step above our high output packs. Okay. Okay. So these batteries have more power. Yep. They run cooler. That's right. More durable housing. Redesigned from the ground up with pretty impressive uh, new tech. They have the ingress holding, charge fast and all that. Yep. You're going to tell me it costs more and it, you're going to say that justifies Enormous cost, right? Yeah, well, the, the great thing is, is we're actually um, delivering all those benefits you talked about um, to the user and holding price. So, you know, we retail the, the high output XE80 at 199 and the high output H12 at 249. We're holding the price uh, when we upgrade to the, the Forge XE80 and the Forge HE12. And we're delivering all those benefits and added value with no additional cost to the user. So, you put all that work into it, and, and it's an instant upgrade compared to. I guess we'll call these legacy, the legacy batteries, and it doesn't cost a penny more for, for, the, for, for the end user. Correct. Yeah, let's be clear. Yeah. Uh, everything that we just talked about <laughs> is more expensive. Yes. Uh, for you. For us. For us. But not, not for us. And not the reason for... we do it, we're doing it is we feel like it is the right thing to do to continue to make our users more productive, to continue to convert them from corded gas pneumatic. Um, and, and ultimately, that's why we're doing what we're doing. Exactly. So, what I'll know is the battery is just, you know, one piece yes. of what it takes uh, to deliver a world-class uh, cordless power tool. And we talked about, you know, introducing the next breakthrough this year, and the battery is just a piece of that. Uh, I'd love to be able to walk you through some of the other things we're doing from a motor and electronic standpoint. Uh, before we get to that, so, but the 4G battery will provide an instant upgrade to existing users, let's say a user doesn't, is happy with their tools, this will still provide benefits, but you're saying there's, there's more. There, this is part of a, a system of uh, improvements and next generation capabilities. Correct, so anybody that's in the, uh, installed in, in M18 today will get an instant upgrade in performance. Uh, and whether that's just if they only go with the Forge battery or if they go with the Forge battery and the supercharger. And then what we're doing with next generation tools is we're unlocking more of that capability that the Forge batteries have to offer. Um, and is this, this just going to be um, a one-time launch or is this is unlocking, um, raising the ceiling to where M18 can go? It's raising a ceiling. This is not a one-time launch. This is not about the now. This is about our commitment to driving core technologies across all of our systems, including M12 and MX Dual. Um, but this is, honestly, this is just the beginning. And uh, we have a couple products that we're gonna launch together to help uh, you know, demonstrate that capability, but uh, what I can say is you can expect a lot more from us uh, you know, in, the, in the coming months and, and years. So this is just the beginning. Before we get to, I guess, uh, the, next, uh, the next tech, are there any downsides to the forged batteries? Like I see we have these vent holes, what if it gets clogged? What if there's sawdust? What if there's drywall? Will that impact the user in any negative way? Yeah, so um, the short answer to that is no. You know, the, we've designed our battery to operate in those types of conditions. And if you take our batteries today, 
they're exposed to many of those those same environments, right? Water, dirt, dust, debris. And we have weep holes in our packs today. Um, material can get in, and we design our batteries as a way for material to get out as well. So, you know, when we have wood shavings get into the pack, um, the, the weep holes events kind of work two ways. So material can get in. The coating is going to protect the core to ensure that nothing gets damaged, the electronics, the core, the cell, the terminals. Um, and that material has a way to also get out. Um, now, over time, could that material build up potentially? Um, but we don't believe that that's going to negatively impact the battery. We've designed it uh, to, to withstand that environment. And, you know, Andrew mentioned we spend a lot of time with our users. We spent a lot of time um, uh, using these packs out in the field with, with our core users. And, and our users have no problem uh, pushing these packs to their limits and being very candid with us on when they do work and when they don't work. And um, these batteries have come back better. They've come back heavily used, uh, and they still come back operational um, working in those environments. Okay, so we have these large vent holes. So we have the high airflow, which moves a lot of heat out of the battery pack. That's right. But also if some dust uh, gets in there, it also provides a pathway for the dust to come out. That's right. Oh, especially when you have that yeah, you get charger. Like, you get like a natural battery cleaner with this. You know, you slide the battery in and the airflow is going to go in. Now, that's not the intended purpose of that, but um, there is airflow that allows you know, material to go in and out. So it's something to keep on your mind. Like you don't want to stick this in the mud and just let it build a hard casing on it, but you could use it in normal construction environments without worry. Yeah. And again, there's no maintenance involved with our batteries, right? You know, no maintenance required. You, um, the way our users are, op you know, our users have been using these high output ADO, XE80, and HE12 batteries for almost five, over five years now. And uh, the same way they use those batteries are the same exact way they should be using the Red Lithium Forge XE80 and HE12 batteries. We're not asking our users to treat these with greater care because they have the venting and, and be more careful. No, they, they should actually be more robust and be able to handle those environments better. And I know we talked a little bit about field testing. How long would you say these have been in the hands of uh, um, field testers who use and abuse them to look for any? Uh, I would say over two plus, close to close to three years potentially uh, of maybe not this exact design, but iterations and development um, of this of this pack. All right. So you, so you have your field testers. They used it, abused it in yeah. work environments, yeah. and then this is the final result after the combination of all that absolutely series of improvements over two years yes and that approach is not just on our battery that's any any tool any product that we make a milwaukee tool is as we develop those prototypes we get the user feedback we iterate upon that fix the fix the issues improve upon what they like uh, and then ultimately the the final product should be a representation of the best of the best and eliminate those issues and problems you know ultimately what allows us to do that is um, our approach to field testing and, and vertical integration, stuff like motors and battery packs, where we design, develop, and manufacture all of them in-house. So we can have, uh, we have the manufacturing teams uh, working together with the design teams that are working together with the product managers out in the field uh, to talk about the best ways to uh, listen to the feedback and, and solve the problem. Okay. Any other questions on the batteries? So you said this has been in development for about two years now. Yeah, ish. So what are you developing now for two years in the future? Well, you're, you're going to have to wait and see, Stuart. There's, all, all I can say is there are many things in development <laughs> I had on to the try. battery side. You know, Andrew said, like, uh, we're, we're going to be taking these, these technologies and, and figuring out ways to expand upon them. M18, MX Fuel, M12, uh, our goal is to take these new cell technologies, these new pack design capabilities, and figure out how can we incorporate that to benefit all our users, all our trades, and do what's best for the user and, and meet the needs where we need them, and not just create batteries, just to create batteries and, um, and create Me Too products. We're gonna design what's right for the user. Yeah, and, and, and let me put it uh, this way as well. Um, we, all, we often get the question, you know, how much more can you really get out of M18? Your competitors are going to higher voltage systems. They're new systems that aren't compatible with the, the prior systems that they've launched. Um, and what I can tell you is that we're highly confident uh, in M18, not just what we're showing you right now, uh, but the future of M18 is very bright um, and there's a very long runway, not just on M18, uh, but on uh, M12 and MX Fuel as well. 
Now, with these contacts and terminals and laser welding, how much of a runway did you leave yourselves with this technology? From what standpoint? Uh, power delivery, let's say. Because a, a lot of people think that you go to high voltage, you drop mm -hmm. the current, and current is, it, it tends to be uh, a limitation in terms of the heat, yep. the size of components. Um, yeah, so I think um, it, it's, a, it's a good question. And um, what I'll say is with the, with the introduction of the forged batteries and then uh, the next generation of M18 fuel, um, we're improving the power output by 50% while still being on the same voltage, same platform. Uh, and there is still more runway going forward on the system. So um, I'm sure you, you, know, you probably asked the same question five years ago and 10 years ago. And you know, what I'll tell you is we'll, we'll tell you the same answer five years from now, uh, is that we think actually there is still a very long runway in terms of total capability on the system. Okay, and we, we've talked in the past and you, you always say, we're, we're designing new tech for this, this battery, but also we're laying the groundwork for future capabilities. Mm -hmm. So we could expect to see lessons learned here throughout the, the near future roadmap. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. yeah, we definitely take a continuous improvement approach. Um, you know, we work really hard to, to deliver on the user needs. Uh, we recognize that we're not perfect, but we take the feedback and we improve upon it. Okay. Uh, and notice these have the tabless cylindrical cells, and I know that's in the 12 volt also. Mm -hmm. The Forge 6 has stacked pouch cells. Correct. So the big question, a lot of enthusiasts want to know, a lot of users, why would you not use pouches in a pack like this or a pack like the 8 mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. So what I'd say is um, we'll use whatever the right and best technology is to solve a specific pain point. So when it came to the Forge 6.0, we leveraged pouch cell technology uh, to deliver a high power, small lightweight solution that charges incredibly fast. Um, and when it came to Forge 8.0 and 12.0, where you're continuing to expand the size of that gas tank uh, and the users demand more runtime for a different set of applications, we like tablets. Uh, for a variety of reasons, but one specifically we point out to you is that it greatly improves the turnaround time. So because we are able to integrate cool cycle with tablet cells, it's, it's actually would be far more difficult uh, to do with pouch. Um, so, oh, okay. yeah, so <clears throat> once again, like pouches, uh, like kind of like an aluminum bag, if you will. Uh, and then the way that it's stacked is it has separators within the stack and it has to be fully enclosed uh, to manage the swelling and everything over time. So. Uh, Tablus is a very different dynamic, and uh, we like it, once again, for a variety of reasons, uh, but one specifically is because it is that steel can that can wick away heat uh, and allow us to do something like cool cycle. So where I'm going with this is these users that demand more runtime, uh, let's say it's someone's using an SDS max rotary hammer uh, that's drilling out concrete, uh, and they're doing back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back applications. Uh, it was really critical to take that battery and greatly improve the turnaround time. And a lot of that have to do with not just the charge speed, but managing the temperature of the battery so they can use it right again after it's done charging. So it's a great example of looking at a different pain point and using a different technology to solve the problem. Okay, so the Forge is built uh, with battery, pouch batteries in the same sense as, uh, let's say, a stack of books. Mm -hmm. But you can't get airflow through that stack like top to bottom, here you can. So you take the hot pack, put it on the, the, super, the dual port supercharger, and with that cool cycle technology, you could flush the heat out and get it back to work with quick turnaround. Correct. Well, pouch, pouch delivers high power, but you have to be mindful of the endurance. At some point, it reaches high temperature, and you have to just wait for that heat to dissipate. Effectively, yeah. Yep. Okay. We should, we should talk about the next breakthrough. Oh, yes. Yeah. Motors, electronics. <clears throat> yeah, so let's transition to um, the tool. So when it comes to, to producing um, a world-class cordless solution, it's kind of like a three-legged stool approach, if you will. 
you have the battery, the motor, and the electronics, and you have to develop them collectively together to deliver the best combination of power, ergonomics, and life. Meaning that it's not uh, good enough to take a new cell technology, put it in an existing pack, and say, hey, we have something for you. What we do is we take a new cell technology that's developed with the, from the ground up for a battery pack, and then we uh, co-develop new motor and electronics mm -hmm. at the same time to, take, to make that next big jump in performance and capability. So what we have here on the table is uh, the guts of uh, two <coughs> different generations of M18 fuel Cirque um, And we'll, we'll start with the motor. So uh, note too that we're using Cirque just to illustrate an example. Um, you'll see different motor technologies included in the next breakthrough pending the product and the application. So the motor technology that's used in a circ saw is different than the motor technology that's used in a chainsaw that just demands absolute raw power uh, and isn't quite as constrained uh, from a size standpoint. So one thing that, uh, that we've done here is we have an industry first, uh, what's called a segmented brushless motor design. And this is going to be in our new M18 fuel circ saw. And this is actually really exciting because when it comes to, to, to motor design, um, it's the, really the name of the game is uh, how much copper can you jam into a smaller area, right? Uh, so how much power generating material between the magnets, the grade, the sizing, and then the copper. And one of the challenges that we have with these motors is the manufacturing process and the ability to actually improve what's called slot fill, uh, which means you you essentially just want less air gaps in between them. You want as much copper as possible. So what we developed uh, is a new manufacturing process. Uh, it's called segmented motor design. And what we do now is we individually wind each segment and then we weld the segments together to create the motor. So when you look at those two motors, look at the difference in copper and size. So this new generation power state brushless motor, this has, I wanna say it's around 36% more copper and it's 15% smaller than the prior generation. How much more copper? 36% and 15% smaller. So more powerful, smaller, lighter weight. If you flip it around, you'll actually hold this, uh, this one. Yep, and then keep this one upright. There you go. Now uh, you can see a great apples to apples comparison there. That's a big difference. So here, you need a minimum spacing so you get that equipment to wind it with the automation machine. Mm -hmm. Here, if you have the segment, you, you don't have that same constraint. Correct. You have the machine to, to freely wind it. Correct. And, you and this is, a, this is a, actually another great example of Wow. The benefit of being vertically integrated in our approach to design and development. So once again, we had manufacturing team working with the design team uh, at the same time to say, how do we develop this new manufacturing process and a better design to get uh, and deliver the most power dense motor, by the way. So it's the most power dense motor uh, we've ever created on yeah. M18. Yeah, I'm looking at it. There's, I mean, there, there's small, small gaps, but not here. You could put a pencil through it here. A needle with a toothpick? <laughs> no, not, not even. So what does this mean for the end user? You have some more copper, you have more current, uh, um, more, you've, well, sorry. more copper, you get more magnetic field, you get more power. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, so uh, the motor is uh, quite a bit more powerful uh, versus the prior generation motor, uh, and once again, smaller and lighter. So. When you put that into a circ saw, you have a circ saw that is collectively 50% more powerful versus the prior generation when you take the stack up of battery motor and electronics, and it's smaller and lighter. So for that, you know, that framer that's that's walking around uh, doing work all day long with a circ saw, that that size and weight savings makes a really big impact to them in terms of reducing fatigue. So and I'm looking at the the wire. So the wire, the winding wire is about 
same diameter? Similar so, gauge. Yeah. So similar power consumption. Oh, actually, uh, it's more efficient. So, and that comes to the electronics. Uh, so, <laughs> okay, okay. More power, longer runtime. Well, if apples to apples, mm -hmm. and it's smaller. Correct. And it's once again designed to take the full capability of that Forge 12O battery. Okay, whereas as good as this was, this was designed around your legacy power delivery and battery mm -hmm. technologies. And this is designed around the best available today and probably the best that you first see in the next couple next of couple years. years. Yep, correct. Yeah, and as we scale that motor design up and down and, and deliver more power, you know, as that motor demands more power, you know, that's why we, we're pairing these together, the motor, the electronics, the battery. We now have a battery that's pushing our system capability, 50% greater capability. And now if, as we scale these new motor designs up and, and demand more power from the system, we have a battery that can deliver that. So you, you, know, you mentioned runway for the future. This is how we create runway for the future, is we scale improvements in the motor, in the electronics, and the battery. So when one, one por portion of that component demands more power, the other can actually deliver it. And is a segmented technology scalable? Like, will we see this? I know this is in the, the new MEC fuel circular saw. Will we see this in other types of tools where you just have smaller or larger segments depending on the, the tool needs? Yeah, you'll, you'll definitely see uh, us take this, this motor design, the segmented motor design, and scale it uh, to fit other tool needs. And it won't be the only motor design, too. You know, as Andrew mentioned, we've got a brand uh, new motor in the dual battery. Uh, Chainsaw and other products that we're going to be introducing here, and we're going to be iterating on those as well. Uh, think about it as similar to our approach to our, our, our cell technology and forge. You know, we're not saying Red Lithium Forge is a single technology. It's not just pouch. It's not just tabless. Uh, it could be those t multiple technologies or, and other new cell technologies. It's a very similar approach to how we're, we're taking to motors. Segmented is going to be one of many motor designs that we look at, and we'll be looking at scaling this, this segmented motor design to other products in the future. Okay, so there's a lot more going on, and just for the new high power circular saw, we have this new segmented yeah. motor, and you're going to leverage this where it's where it makes sense to to have this technology. Yeah. I imagine this costs a lot more. You have, I, I mean, production steps for for a case like this and something like this, it's a multi step process, but this is a significantly higher investment uh, to develop this manufacturing process. So we're not going to see this like in the uh, compact brushless impact driver because we, we don't need to, but where we need that increase in power and where the size and weight could be reduced to reduce uh, fatigue. Yeah, and, I, and I'll never say never because, uh, you know, it's, it's new technology as it scales. There's, there's obviously improvements that come over time, but yes, you're right, is uh, we're going to take the approach uh, and implement it where we feel like it makes sense and delivers the, the most value to the user. So they go, I, I can see how they go in hand in hand. You raise the ceiling of power delivery, and you raise the, the ceiling of uh, uh, what you do with that power. Yeah, and then uh, sometimes the forgotten one is how to connect those two things together. Oh. So uh, what we have here is the prior generation uh, Cirxol electronics. For and the M18 fuel, M18 seven fuel, and a quarter. seven and a quarter Cirxol. Yep. And then this is the <clears throat> new generation uh, M18 fuel, seven and a quarter Cirxol. And um, you don't have to be uh, an electrical engineer um, to be able to tell that there's something different about these things. So the wire, the the power, the power wire is so much. Yeah. So this is great. So this uses. <clears throat> I want to say it's uh, it's called eight gauge Superflex wire. Um, that has around, uh, I believe it's around 100 strands uh, of copper in here uh, versus, I want to say this is closer to like 10, uh, 20, something, something to that uh, degree. Um, and there's, there's a lot that went into this. So not just the wire gauge uh, to, to improve the current cap carrying capability, uh, but we also had to partner uh, with the electronic suppliers to develop lower impedance components. Uh, so, uh, you know, different components like the FETs uh, that are much more power dense to be able to handle that current carrying capability. Um, 
Another thing we've done is you can see just the overall packaging is, is quite a bit smaller. So uh, from a board development design, um, this uses uh, more layers. Uh, so there's more copper layers actually within this board. Uh, once again, the benefit there is that it can transfer current more efficiently. Um, and then at takeaways with this package, new package of electronics, it's the most efficient uh, electronics package we've ever made. And what I mean by that is efficiency comes in a couple different forms. One, you get a smaller package, right? You can tell it's just it's oh, physically yeah. smaller. Uh, two, um, you will get more runtime because it is a more efficient, it, efficient, it utilizes the energy from the battery and the motor more efficiently. Um, and the more, the more efficient it is, the less, less heat and less heat is less wasted energy. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So we do have, uh, still some pretty aggressive heat sinking to pull away, but yes, it is, uh, more efficient. So it generates less heat. Um, and this is a great example too of, once again, if you say, okay, well, how do you get more power out of M18? Uh, it takes a lot of thought and effort uh, to be able to deliver on that. So this is the heat sink on the legacy circular yep. saw. So you have, it's a larger board because you need more spacing because the, the thermal dissipation, you just need that space. Otherwise it'll heat up in too, too quickly. Yeah, another, another section like Andrew mentioned was, was the upgraded FETs in the electronics. So a big part of what takes up so much space on this board are these FETs. These, large packages. These are the new upgraded FETs. So just take a look at the comparison of these FETs compared to the design on, on our existing board. You can see it's, it's really next generation electronic components that we're, we're putting into that package. So for, for, for these, you work with the semiconductor companies to design it to your specs? Correct. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So um, it's, you know, we're, we're unique in that how much current we're being asked to, to push through the system. Uh, so we co-develop and we work and partner with the semiconductor uh, partners to develop lower impedance components specifically uh, for this, this application. Okay. So is this exclusive to you or exclusive to you for some time? Cause I, like we've, we've talked about this in the yeah. past. Yep. I've talked to like Paul Fry and he said, um, well, a lot of times you work pushing that envelope, pushing what you could do with 18 volt by also leveraging all kinds of advancements. Correct, and, and what I would say is it's not exclusive to us. However, uh, there's two big benefits that we get through the partnerships. Uh, one, we code develop, so meaning that we designed it for the way that our system operates, so we get the most out of it. Uh, and two, it's a speed to market play. Uh, because we code develop it, because we are integrating it as the component is being developed, like integrated it into the system, uh, we have a significant improvement into speed to market versus the competitors. Okay, because you code developed it, you have a head start. Correct. Whereas your tool will hit the market, all your competitors will buy it up, they'll start analyzing, say we want that too, but that you're already, you're already a couple years ahead because you code developed that, that package. That Yeah, and we get the most benefit out of it because once again it was... It's bespoke for, for your needs. Correct. Other yeah. people is kind of have to shoehorn it into, sure. yep. and I see this, the heat sink is a lot beefier too. So this could, this, this could take a lot more heat than a lot, a lot, a lot more power. Yeah, agreed. So we're, um, and, and you'll get a chance to see the circ saw where the, the total product itself is smaller, lighter, way more powerful uh, versus the prior generation. And then the other thing that we haven't talked about uh, within the electronics is um, the advancements in motor controls. So uh, there's a lot of work that went into improving the motor controls and um, one of the, the instant takeaways you'll see when you get your hands on with the Cirque saw is its ability to maintain the same speed through the entire application. So even in a demanding application, say you're cutting uh, triple stack OSB, you can rail on the thing pretty good and based on the, the new motor controls and then the higher power capability, uh, and how we manage uh, that it holds its speed uh, at full power the entire time. So what that translates to for our users is a much faster application speed. Which everybody, everybody, everybody wants. You, you do the same, the same task in less time without bogging down. And especially you have saw blades that start getting dull and 
yeah, so either you can cut faster or do your application faster, or you can do more. You can do higher intensity applications. Get more work done before the end of the day. Exactly. That's the next breakthrough. What do you think? It looks, it looks like you put a lot of work into it. Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's, and it's not just one part. It's not just the battery's completely overhauled. You took, and it's not just you scaled up the battery. It's you re um, the, the motor. You redesigned the, the motor. Now, a lot of people think, eh, there's brushless motors in RC cars. There's brushless motors in all mm -hmm. kinds of things. Um, how much, if you had to put a percentage, how much of this development was completely unique to your team versus inspired by technological advances in the industry? That's a good question. I don't, I don't know if I could tie a percentage to it, but what I, I can say, and Andrew alluded to it, is we have a massive team of engineers that are working through this. It's not just our motor engineers, it's our industrial engineers, electrical engineers, our former engineers, our systems engineers, partner with our battery engineers. You're talking hundreds upon hundreds of engineers that worked on this entire next breakthrough launch. So, uh, you know, much of this motor design, the electronics design, the battery design was done in house uh, with, with the work of hundreds of engineers working together to get this entire platform to launch uh, in sync, work together and, and pave the runway for future products. Yeah, and, and when all of these th three things uh, come together for the next breakthrough, um, what it means for the system is that M18 will now be 10 times more powerful than when it was introduced in 2007. And all along the way, maintaining uh, compatibility for our customers. So it just shows our commitment, our dedication, our focus um, to protecting you know, our, our, our users' investments and uh, continuing to make them more productive. So you're, you're nowhere near the limit of what you could do. It, Every technological advancement, it seems like you get closer and closer, and then you just you just demolish that, that ceiling. I'm, I'm really impressed with this motor. Yeah, we're not. It, you, you should it's, be. And, and this is not an incremental step change. This is a massive step change, once again, towards converting away from corded gas and pneumatic fully. And I, I, one of the reasons I'm so impressed is because it, it's not just one new idea everything about it looks looks new you welded the segments together the the winding pattern even it's uh, it, 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 it's more impressive. efficient yeah, it's, yeah. It, how many iterations did that did that take Ooh, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> have to ask our motor engineers <laughs> on that one multiple <laughs> let's just yes. say we didn't get our first pass yeah yeah it's a uh, it, there's always challenges when you're bringing up new manufacturing processes. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it took multiple iterations to get this to where it's at today. So with this segmented technology, um, is this, how many patents is, does this, is covered? I mean, what's to stop a competitor from saying, oh, let's try that mm -hmm. too. Or even, it, let, let's say they do, how far ahead do you think you are with this kind of technology? Yeah, I'll say that, um, you know, technically there's nothing to stop a competitor from doing it. But what I will tell you is, uh, once again, the, the level of investment and expertise required to develop this is very high. Uh, so there will inherently be a barrier there. Um, and, uh, yeah, like we're, we feel like we are certainly uh, ahead. Uh, not just in the motor, uh, but collectively with the electronics and, and the battery packs, and honestly, the charger as well, right? That's often undershadowed, yeah. uh, and that charger is equally uh, as big of a deal as you know a battery or electronic package. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the the chargers. So we we talked about the cool cycle technology, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we introduced this last year as our most powerful M18 charger. It's able to charge the M18 Red Lithium Forge XC6 so 15 minutes supercharged, 80%. Uh, fastest fastest charging M18 battery we've ever had. Um, now we're, we're taking that same fast charge capability, we're introducing it for the Red Lithium Forge XC80 and the HD120 battery. The HD120 battery is now charging 25% faster than the high output HD120 uh, battery today. And with paired with that cool cycle technology, you're not only getting that 35 minutes supercharged 80%, 
you're minimizing downtime uh, cooling, you're coming off that charger cooler, and you're uh, able to deliver more productivity on the tool on back-to-back -back applications. So it delivers that benefit for Forge, but it delivers a benefit for all our existing batteries as well. You know, our users that are invested in red lithium, red lithium high output batteries, this will charge Forge batteries up to 6x faster. It'll charge high output batteries up to 4x faster and red lithium batteries up to 2x faster. So all our existing users that are invested in the M18 system still get a benefit. And it's dual bay. It's simultaneous. It has the charge adapt technology that we introduced last year that allows the, bat the charger to intelligently transfer the, the 18 amps of power that it is able to deliver across those two bays, identifying which battery is on there and delivering the optimal efficiency of power across those two bays. So it delivers benefits standalone for the invested user, and it delivers even more benefits when you pair with Forge to unlock those additional capabilities. Okay, so it's a simultaneous charger and up till what point? Because you said it'll transfer, it'll uh, shift power over once it detects, say, the uh, Forge level battery. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, can, you, can you explain that? Yeah, so with the charge adapt technology, um, say you put a Forge battery or a lithium battery, XC50 for example, uh, the charger is going to detect that the Forge HD120 battery is on there. It's going to shift a majority of its power to that Forge HD120 battery and deliver a faster charge uh, current to that pack while still simultaneously charging the XC50. As that Forge HD120 battery is getting closer to full charge and it's ramping down its charge current, it's able to transfer power as needed to the other bay. So it's intelligently able to transfer power. Um, and as you're swapping packs and moving other packs around, it's continuing actively monitoring that to transfer power back and forth. So it allows okay. you to be more efficient. So if you've got two batteries, you're trying to charge them both, it's in ensuring that both batteries are being able to max out its charge current based on what the charger can deliver. Okay, that, that makes sense. So it, it, it gets, it's more productive for, for you. Correct. And you don't have to babysit the charger and decide, well, this one can charge faster, so, and it. Yeah, hmm. and with the cool cycle earlier, I'd mentioned you know it delivers that three x uh, more work done over the workday by minimizing because it cool, time. It cools the pack while it's charging, so not only does it cool a hot pack, you yeah. don't get added heat put back into it during during the charging. Yeah, so let's take an example. For example, if you had the Forge mm. HD twelve O on the dual battery supercharger, a uh, dual bay supercharger, and you had the high output HD twelve O on the dual bay rapid charger. Um, you, both batteries were used on a demanding application. They're overheated. You put them on, on the charger. Since that high output HD 12 volt battery um, has no active air cooling, no cool cycle capability, there's no airflow being delivered from the charger, it is just sitting on that charger for up to 15 minutes just cooling, just for that battery to cool from the ambient temperature around it on its own. Once that temperature is low enough, it's now engaging the charging and able to deliver the charge. 15 minutes of really just dead time waiting for that pack to cool down until it charges. Whereas when you put the Forge HD120 battery on the dual base supercharger, uh, in, in as little as up to 90 seconds, uh, it is able to start charging and immediately start delivering that, that full charge current. Right after use, you could take the hot pack, put it on the charger, set 90 seconds, and then it's ready to, to recharge. Yeah, and it, it depends on, on the load that you apply. It's up to 90 seconds. If you are applying loads uh, with the Forge 12 volt battery and the HD 12 volt battery on some of those lower loads where it overheats the high output 12 volt and you take both packs and put them on both chargers, there may be zero downtime on the dual base supercharger. It's immediately cooling that pack. So up to 90 seconds, yeah. but in a lot of cases, it could be a lot It could be quicker. It could be a lot quicker. It could be instant. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you put that battery on the charger, it's already cool enough to start charging. Airflow. That's and then it continues to cool it through the charge cycle uh, and the the big benefit is at the end of charge, that pack comes off cool now. Yeah, and because you have the the forged batteries with the uh, the tablet cells or the, the six with the the pouch, the lower resistance, it can take more heat, so they're well, it, there's less waste to to heat. So they run cooler, so it already runs cool and it it cools down even faster. Yes, so yep. you could just yeah, we're we're hitting oh. it from both sides. Yep, we're hitting from the, the discharge side. So like when you use it in a tool, it runs cooler. Uh, and then we're force air cooling it while it's on the charger as well. And we believe this is a major advantage that we have is being able to deliver this charging technology, be able to deliver this battery that can take advantage of that charging technology and the cool cycle tech uh, it, in totality gives increased productivity for the user. It sounds like it. Um, last winter I used a competitor's product. I, I was testing it and the batteries overheated. And they were both 
12 amp hour level batteries and they run 199 to 250 each and then the batteries they overheated and it was nothing i could do and i waited a couple minutes and i, I kept going because I, I needed to get finished the work and they were they it just it it, it, it took a it ran a little longer and it, it was done. I couldn't charge it. I couldn't use it. Yeah, it's just dead time. And then it's, it's extra batteries. So, but with, with something like this, you just cool it down in the charger and recharge it and it's ready to go. Yeah. So ultimately what this allows the, the end user to do is they can have less batteries on the job site because they can churn through their batteries quicker um, or they can increase the intensity or the capability of the applications are working on, do more demanding applications or do those applications faster with the existing batteries they have because now the dual base supercharger is able to keep up with, with those forged batteries. And only the, like this, this charger. This is the first charger uh, on first. the A18 system that has this cool cycle capability. The first, you said. Cool, cool cycle technology is, is something that we, we see a major advantage in. So I would not expect cool cycle to only be on this. We have it on the MX fuel supercharger. Uh, this is a technology we want to utilize uh, for our users. It's interesting. I, I think that this could get some of the more cordless power tech into more spaces. Like I know um, landscaping, a lot of the industry is moving towards battery powered, but a lot of the pros aren't because they, they, they get gas, gasoline, they go, they fill up, and it, it, it's, yep. ready to, it's ready to go. Whereas they don't want a slew of batteries that take a long time to charge and that they overheat, and then those batteries are, are just off the shelf and they have to cool down and it's, it, it's, they have to, they have to, in addition to just wasting, having to invest in so many more batteries to keep up with that, they have to babysit the charger and nobody, nobody wants that. That's why a lot of them, they don't want to move from gas yet. In some places they're being forced to. And I, I think this might convince some of them at least. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was say thanks. Thanks for bringing it up. Cause yeah, you're, you're hundred percent right. Um, and this is gonna provide a massive benefit to the landscape professional. Um, whether they're in a shop setting or they're on the go, um, they can power this with the roll-on power supply, right? Oh. So we introduced the roll-on power supply last year. Um, and what this allows is them to supercharge their batteries and, and air cool them uh, in environments like a trailer that are typically pretty warm uh, and in Southern climates that are also very warm. So. Uh, yeah, this is a this is going to be a significant breakthrough for that customer because um, once again they can they can manage less batteries, right? It's more effective for them. Uh, they can improve turnaround time, lower their cost of investment to to uh, convert from from gas to cordless. Yeah, and if we look at you know some of the competitors that are operating in this space, whether it's uh, competitors of M18 or MX Fuel, um, and we look at their approach to batteries, we're seeing a lot of competitors that are trying to fully seal their packs and that um, traps in the heat potted do all different kinds of things to, to protect the battery and operate in those environments but that's adversely impacting their ability to deliver better thermal performance and, and capability and and if uh, heat is the enemy uh, it only makes that problem worse um, that's why we believe the pairing this cool cycle technology with these batteries allows us to and with our patented ingress coating and our uh, increased durability capability operate in those environments confidently and deliver a better system of back-to-back -back work um, that isn't limited thermally from that perspective. Okay, and so I know heat travels um, for something that's hot to something that is, is cold. So when you have a battery like this and it's in a hot trailer, it's gonna take longer to cool down. That's correct. Yep. And then unless you do work, put work into it, then we have the fans there yep. actively cooling through the cool cycle, those battery packs. Yep. Even in those hot environments with, with trailers, yeah, you're, it's gonna impact your, your cooling time, but just the fact that you're introducing airflow in general mm. makes a major difference in the cooling performance. Like rolling down the windows in a hot car. Exactly. Um, first, thing you, first thing you do when you get in your car, you, you wanna roll your windows around, get all that hot air out and keep moving through. So yeah, that is the, the benefit of, of the cool cycle. The last thing I do wanna talk about is, um, you know, how we're communicating power to our users. You know. Uh, last year we introduced the the power scale and right. um you know we introduced a power scale to be able to show that the the forge xc 60 battery is a power level four same as our high output hg 12 which was our most powerful m18 battery um we're still building upon that power scale we are introducing the red lithium forge hg 12 as a power level five now so this is now our most powerful m18 battery 
and the Forge XC80 is a power level four, same as the Forge XC60 or the high output HD12. Um, and you know, we are the first to really introduce a power scale of simple nature like that, that allows, and, and the goal of that is truly allow the user to have a, a simple way to navigate their battery experience, whether it's on the shelf or on the job site to be able to understand how do I distinguish power from battery to battery? And you know, like we talked about, the difference in power is application speed and capability to do. So as you step up in those batteries, the user can expect that they're gonna get faster application speeds or the capability to do. Um, and, and that's why I wanted to introduce a scale because um, the capacity number on the side of the battery alone does not distinguish power versus runtime anymore. Our batteries are becoming more power dense as these technologies evolve. Uh, and we're able to deliver batteries like the Forge XC60 and ADO that are smaller, lighter package, yet deliver more power. Uh, they pack above, uh, they punch above their class. And as a result, we wanted to introduce a power scale that can illustrate that and show the user that, hey, you don't have to always get a larger, heavier battery to get that power. You can step down to the Forge XC80 or the Forge XC60 uh, and not compromise on size and weight to get power. Okay, so the number on the side of the battery refers to the gas tank, the size of the gas capacity, tank, yeah. uh, the capacity, the, the runtime. Um, and the new power scale, so that's similar to the horsepower of the battery. So we can see if somebody's happy with performance of, uh, let's say, a tier three battery, and then they want something different, charge capacity, different runtime, they could look in that same level and choose another battery to deliver similar performance, but maybe uh, other properties that they find desirable. Like, let's say they want more compact battery they could still look at the same power level. If they sure. want more power, they look at the higher power level, and sometimes they'll have a choice between lower size or greater runtime. Exactly. Okay. We want to make that experience as simple as possible in the future. We may be looking at how do we utilize that power scale, not only on the battery side, but maybe the tool side as well. How do we help the user figure out uh, different types of tools and the different power levels they operate in to help, help pair the battery with the tool? We just introduced this last year. We're expanding upon it, and we'll see where we take it. But we have gotten a lot of great feedback on how that helps navigate the experience. It does, because then we, we could see, like the Forge 6 will have the same power level as the Forge 8 and the legacy high output 12. Yeah, exactly. It's making bang sounds. It's yeah. Perfect. Any other last burning questions? What do you see in the future for Forge? So now we have a Forge 6 amp hour pouch cells. We have the XC8 and XC12. I'll leave you with this. Uh, we're just getting started. Uh, and there's a, there's a very bright future, uh, not just for, for Forge, not just for M18, like what we focus the conversation on, uh, but for M12 and MX Fuel going forward. So all of our cordless systems. So, so expect a high level of continued investment across batteries, motors, and electronics. And one thing we didn't have time to talk about is just system intelligence with the advent of machine learning and everything. And you can expect a lot more to come from us and across all of our systems. Once again, we're, we're just getting started. So you started working on these batteries at least two years ago. And you didn't, you, you're not done. So you're, you're, we're not done. you're, you're not we're stopping not done. here. We're not done. <laughs> we're not stopping. <laughs> Hey, we covered a lot of ground today, and we're really excited about not just M18, but the future of all of our cordless systems. And we feel like we're just getting started. So thank you, as always, Stuart. Appreciate the time. Thank you for having me. As usual, I had a blast, and I learned a lot.